Okay, so when I got finished with the uh, celery printing and you know making some of these little flower shapes on the papers, I thought it would be cute to use them on something or you know just at least one little project to start with. I'm sure I'll use a lot of these in some upcoming projects. But what I did was I took the yellow and orange ones and I took the same color paints and just started painting in uh, the insides of these uh, where the book text was still showing. I just kind of filled them in. And then where there was a gap, like right here, I just added another little petal and painted that in. And I did that all the way around until it got a more rounded flowery shape. So that's what I did here, and then I outlined with, um, I used this, um, I think they call this food ball, feud ball, I'm not sure what the name of it actually is, I don't know if you can read that, Get the, there we go. And um, I bought this recently, and uh, turns out it is permanent once it's dry, you gotta make sure it's really dry. And um, also notice that you can make, a, it's a 1.5 millimeter, um, ball tip and, you, and it makes a nice heavy line really dark but if you write and that's if you're kind of pressing down on it and if you're writing lightly you can make lighter uh, thinner lines so I kind of I'm kind of liking that and um, it gives you a little bit of um, uh, variety you know in one pen so you can get a smaller line and a thicker heavier line so um, that's what I did. That's what I did on these. And maybe when I use these in an upcoming video, uh, maybe I can show, you know, on the video, I'll show exactly how I did it. But since I had shown all the stamping of the uh, celery in this video, I wanted to make it a little shorter. So I went ahead and did these off camera. And then I thought I would cover an envelope. Um, you guys um, probably remember seeing in a previous video where I took a large uh, 9 by 12 envelope. This was just a white uh, 9 by 12 envelope. And I covered it, this one I covered in a piece of tissue paper. And inside I just have torn up uh, book text. And I just collaged all that on the inside and on the flap. And then I put a little bit of the uh, napkin material, uh, I'm sorry, the tissue paper. Uh, inside the inside the flap and just a tiny bit into the envelope so that all of that area was covered. So uh, I will link that video, uh, the previous video where I used, uh, I think it was music paper and a napkin, but I'll link that video up here in an iCard and uh, you can check out how I did this part. So now I've got a piece of tissue paper on the outside of my envelope and I'm just gonna add a little bit of stenciling uh, in the background here before I add these flowers, which I think will look really pretty on this color. Um, on this color, it's a little, it's like a soft cream color tissue paper. So to start with, I'm gonna use uh, just some zigzags here and there uh, on this cover. And I'm gonna use a little bit of this ocean color. It's, it's like a dark teal. And I'm gonna put a little bit out here to dip into on my mat. I know you won't be able to see it very well in the uh, shot, but it's just squirted out there on the mat. And I'm thinking I might do a little bit of green also.
Okay, so I um, <clears throat> I added a couple more rows uh, right here. It seemed like the front didn't have quite enough without that area, so I just added a tiny bit more there while I was using up the paint, and um, then I used up the rest of it. I want to um, decide where I'm going to put my leaves, I mean my flowers, and I think I'm just going to have... Uh, a couple like that. I think that's good. And then I also have a little bud that I painted when I was painting out these flowers. I painted a small bud that I'll have coming off of one of these stems over here. So um, I guess I'll um, just put the flowers in place. I'm going to use a glue stick for that. And then I'll be putting a coat of collage podge over the whole thing <clears throat> once I'm done, but I like the way this looks, so I'm going to just go ahead and put these down here. about right. Nope. Maybe I'll have it tipped up just a little. Looks like it's kind of facing upward. Turn this way maybe. Okay. Okay, and then we'll do the other one. Get my little magazine here so I don't get glue everywhere. bud on after I get the stems in place. And I'm going to use um, my Faber-Castell pit pens to do these um, stems rather than take the paint out again. I think I'm just going to do this. So I think I'll have a a stem coming down this way, and um, the stem is maybe coming from behind there. We'll have it come down that way also. And then we'll have a little stem coming off of that one for the bud. Okay. So the bud is going to go here. But I need a little, I need a little holder for the bud. So what I did is I took a scrap of the dictionary paper, and I traced, traced this little bud onto it here. And I'm gonna just draw a little, um, I don't know what it is. It's just the part of the plant that holds the flower bud.
Alright, so I've been filming this video in pieces, parts and pieces over the last several days. And um, I actually um, missed a few steps of recording, so I just wanted to tell you what I had done. I added some circles, some white ones, and some orange colored ones, kind of orange ones to kind of match the flowers. And I did that dipping, um, you know, little bottle caps and things in into acrylic paint. And I just uh, stamped a few on the front and on the back in the white and in the um, orange color. And um, I also took a, a gold painter's uh, pen and I just uh, drew a sketchy little border around the front and around the back and then I scribbled in a few spots and kind of smeared it with my finger just to add some just to add some uh, shiny shiny bits to the <laughs> to the cover I think it adds a little bit of something it doesn't capture it quite as well on camera as it does in real life but it looks it looks really cute and I put the gold on because I also added uh, this little phrase be grateful because I thought this would make a really cute um, uh, gratitude journal. And so I thought, well, it's got some fall colors going on. And I had uh, napkins. I had napkins with the phrase on it. And that is in gold. This napkin has like six panels. Um, and all of them are the same. So I just cut one out. And I glued it uh, with a glue stick down onto a piece of white uh, copy paper just to make sure it stood out on the picture. If I had glued just the napkin down, all of the stems and all of this background stuff would have shown through on the phrase and I didn't want it to blend into the background. So to make it stand out, I just first glued it onto a thin regular piece of copy paper. And then I glued that down and outlined it just like I outlined the rest. And that's all I did um, that didn't get uh, filmed. So um, so now that I've got uh, all of that in place, uh, the only thing really left that I need to do, um, of course I, I need to add pages, and I, I, won't, I won't do that on this video, but you will see, you can see how I sew in the pages in the other video from previously when I made one of these envelope journals. But I'll just glue these, uh, sorry, sew these pages in. And um, uh, it'll be a nice little gratitude journal. It can be used to write in and also to glue in and, and use washi tapes or stickers or whatever. I think it'll be really cute. And besides putting the pages in, I also wanted to make a little closure for the envelope flaps. So I've already uh, punched a hole in the... Um, in the envelope here right there and um, I thought I would just make a simple little closure for it um, that turns and covers over the flap uh, it's similar to what we used to call photo turns when I was you know back in the scrapbooking days so I just uh, took a piece of scrap book paper and glue used to glue and glued it to a, a piece of pretty thin chipboard but that was just to make it nice and sturdy. And then I'm gonna just take my uh, markers, the same markers like I used before. Might use the bigger ones to color in easier. There we go. And these are the uh, Faber-Castell pit pens that I've been using, um, big brush pens. And I'm just gonna color in this leaf shape that I penciled in here. And um, I just think that will be a nice little accent uh, inside the back there and um, it'll give it a little bit of a pop let's see we'll put a little um, a little bit of a vein in here like that and uh, maybe just a little bit of a it's not shading very well it's just kind of soaking into the page so we'll just draw around it just a bit and I'll trim it out okay so we're just gonna cut the shape out and I did this part earlier so that the glue would be nice and dry it would be completely adhered to this little piece of 
uh, chipboard. And then I'm going to attach this little leaf with a um, with just a little brad. To color that tip right there. In fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'll use the darker one. I'll go ahead and do the edge, the edge of this, so it doesn't um, have that white edge showing. There we go. Good. All right. So I just need to punch a hole for the uh, little eyelet to go through, and actually. I'm going to use this other smaller punch. I think it will work. We'll try it, and if it doesn't work, I'll use a bigger one. I kind of think this is going to work. Uh, let's see here. Kind of hard to see. I better make a little... I'm going to make a little mark where I want to put the hole. Let's do it there. Okay. Now let's see if my little tiny little brad's going to go through there and turn well. Yep. Looks good. All right. So I've got the little brad, and I'm going to just put it in the in the hole and open it up and then if you do anything like this and you add um, you know a staple or a brad or something like that it's a good idea first of all to make it as flat as possible back there and then to cover it with a piece of tape to protect anything you're putting in there and your hands uh, also from getting stabbed <laughs> Uh, let me grab some tape. All right. Just going to take a little piece of packing tape because it's nice and thick. And I'm going to just slip it right inside and cover up the, uh, the prongs there on the, uh, on the brad. I'll press it down real good all around. <clears throat> So now it's nice and smooth in there, so it won't damage anything you put in there, and it won't catch your hands. So the way this is going to work is the leaf slides down when you want to open it, and when you want to close it, you lift it up over the, over the flap, and that just keeps it closed down. So that's a nice, simple way to do a, a flap closure. So there we go, my little uh, gratitude journal. It's the cover and the pages. And um, I just think these are really fun. Envelope journals are um, so, so cool. They're really nice and sturdy, and you've got a nice pocket in the back. Uh, you can um, decorate them any way you want. Um, you know, inside and outside, you can use uh, torn paper strips. You can use uh, old papers, dictionary papers, music sheets. Uh, jelly prints, painted papers, just scraps. Just use all your scraps up, you know, covering an envelope, and you have a nice, uh, sturdy book. So I encourage everybody to give it a try, and um, and then you can see how much fun it is, because it really is fun. It's fun to make and fun to use, and um, I just think it's an awesome way to upcycle an envelope. So... Um, Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you again soon for the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.